Distinguished uh, speakers, uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm deeply delighted to be amongst uh, this August gathering of professionals and experts, and uh, more importantly, uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk about sustainability through the concept of uh, GNH, uh, its gross national happiness, the development philosophy which has guided Bhutan's uh, policies, plans, and programs. At the onset, uh, I would uh, also like to confess that uh, I'm not an expert in GNH, so probably during the question and answer session, you could <laughs> grill me on that. And uh, nor I'm here to claim that uh, GNH is uh, the ultimate path uh, uh, because of its own limitations. Uh, uh, consequently, I must also admit that uh, actually I decided to send my regrets when I received uh, the invitation from ICD and in particular from Mr. Don Fried. Uh, to deliver the keynote address on this historic occasion to the intellectuals who are going to be present here. Uh, however, the more I thought, I felt that uh, despite the little knowledge that I have in this field, I'll try to contribute what I can so as to help in search for a solution because if you remember, the planet must be passed on to our future generations. It's only natural that every individual will seek to enhance his or her inheritance and pass it on to his or her uh, children. At the same time, shouldn't, be, shouldn't it be more natural that uh, every generation or our generation that inherits this earth should pass it on as a stronger and more secure to the next. <clears throat> Excuse me. Without uh, the simple guiding value that our world is shared among us and our future generations, we will continue robbing our planet and our children. Instead of the phrase, we are sacrificing our today for your better tomorrow, it will be like we are exploiting everything for our better today, leaving nothing for our next generation. Uh, this indicates that uh, we are currently living uh, as sustain unsustainable lives. If you're not careful with uh, how we use and dispose resources that are available today. Our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren will have a poor, more miserable world to live in. This is a predicament we all are facing today, and I believe this is where sustainability and GNH comes into foreplay. Ladies and gentlemen, Sustainability is uh, based on a simple principle. Everything that we need for our survival and well-being depends either directly or indirectly on our natural environment. Sustainability creates and maintains the condition under which human and nature can exist in productive harmony. At the same time, it permits to fulfill social economic, and other requirement of present as well as future generations. We all know that uh, sustainability is related to quality of life in a community, whether the economic, social, and environmental system that make up the community are providing a healthy, productive, meaningful life for all community residents, present or future. However, world today, in the quest of uh, Better life, gross domestic product, led development model, compels boundless growth on the planet with already limited resources. Within its framework, there lies no solution 
to the economic, ecological, social, and security crisis that plague the world today and threaten to consume humanity. We desperately need an economy that serves and nurtures the well-being of all sentient beings on Earth and human happiness that comes from living life in harmony with the natural world, with our communities, and with our inner selves. We need, a, we need an economy that will serve humanity, not enslave them. Whatever word we choose, the time has come to value, measure, and implement an economic model which is sustainability-based, well-being-centric, and socially inclusive. Consequently, the concept of sustainable development is very much entrenched in the Bhutanese development philosophy of GNH, Gross National Happiness. It was first enunciated by our king, His Majesty the Fourth King, in the early 70s, long before sustainable development became a global agenda. His Majesty's proclamation during that time saying that gross national happiness is more important than gross national product equals the traditional Putinist belief that there is more to life than just material development. It's based on the premise that true development takes place when social, economic, spiritual, and environmental well-being occur side by side to complement and reinforce each other. I must say that uh, the GNH development philosophy is the Bhutanese version of global concept of sustainability, sustainable development. Even our constitution of the kingdom enshrines GNH as a state policy. Furthermore, the constitution also spells out the duties of every individual, the parliament and the government to safeguard and enhance the environment. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly allow me to uh, introduce the essence of uh, GNH, the gross national happiness, through a parable of Lord Buddha. Uh, Lord Buddha, prior to his enlightenment, uh, he was practicing extreme asceticism for a period of six years. To attain his ultimate spiritual freedom, Growing frustrated and weak from practicing self-mortification, that's being sadist, he was sitting one day by the side of the road when along came a group of singers and dancers. One of them, a woman, sang this fateful word. Fair goes the dancing when the sitar's tuned. Tune us the sitar neither low nor high and we will dance away the hearts of men. The string overstretched breaks and the music flies. The string over slack is dump and music dies. Tune us the sitar neither high nor low. It was then Lord Buddha realized the part of moderation away from the extremes of self-indulgence and self-mortification. He used this realization to attain his ultimate enlightenment which uh, we Buddhists refer to it as middle way. Similarly, the concept of gross national happiness is a new approach to development that tries to balance between material well-being and spiritual contentment. A middle part approach that centers around the well-being of the people, economy, and the environment. A guiding philosophy which cater to quantitative as well as qualitative aspects of development. In short, GNH philosophy is based on the four main pillars. The first one is equitable social economic development. It's to ensure that uh, equity between individuals and communities, as well as regions, to promote social harmony, stability, and unity, and to contribute to development of a just and compassionate society. The second pillar, conservation of environment, is to ensure that 
All development pursuits are within the limits of environmental sustainability and are carried out without impairing the biological productivity and diversity of the nature or the natural environment. The third, preservation and promotion of culture, is to instill appreciation of the cultural heritage and preservation of spiritual and emotional values that contribute to happiness and cushion the people from negative impacts of modernization. And lastly, the fourth pillar, promotion of good governance, to build countries' institutions, human resources, and system of governance, and enlarge opportunities to people at all level to fully participate and effectively make development choices that are true to the circumstances and needs of their families, communities, and nation as a whole. While we talk about uh, GNH, we have to know that uh, this happiness, the word happiness, has nothing to do with the common use of wood that denotes ephemeral passing mood. You can be happy today or unhappy tomorrow uh, due to some temporary external conditions like praise, blame, gain, or loss. Rather, happiness refers to the deep abiding contentment that comes from living life in full harmony with the natural world, with our communities and fellow beings, and with our cultural and spiritual heritage. In short, from feeling totally connected to our world. And yet, our modern world, and particularly its economic system, promote precisely the reverse. A profound sense of alienation from the natural world and from each other. By cherishing self-interest and material gain, we destroy nature, degrade our natural and cultural heritage, disrespect uh, indigenous, knowledge, indigenous knowledge, we overwork, get stressed out, and we no longer have time to enjoy each other's company, let alone to contemplate and meditate on life's deeper meaning. Many studies now show that massive gains in GDP and income have not made us happier. On the contrary, it has been demonstrated empirically that deep social networks are a far better predictor of satisfaction and well-being than income and material gain. It's significant that the term GNH was first coined in direct contrast to gross national product, literally as a sharp critic of our current materialistic obsession and growth-based economic system. And it's even more significant that the statement was not made in relation to Bhutan only or alone, but as a universal pro proclamation true for the world and for all beings. However, when uh, we talk about happiness, it doesn't suggest in any way that the global efforts of sustainable development of the past 20 years have not benefited Bhutan. Our country has indeed benefited in many ways, and this was largely possible because there was a good marriage between the global, global concept of sustainable development and our homegrown model called GNH. But today, uh, in this highly globalized world, irrespective of where we live, environmental, social, and economic problem of one country affect those in the neighborhood and beyond, including countries which are on the path of sustainable development. This is becoming in increasingly visible since the emergence of global warming, climate change, and globalization. In all this, we are acutely aware that what we measure is what gets policy attention, and that what we count signifies what we value. And so, in order to assess the performance of the four pillars of cross-national happiness, Bhutan has embarked on basing every development policy and actions on the objective of cross-national happiness. While many in the world wonder 
whether an inclusive and multidimensional measure of development will provide the much needed solution for the world's problem. We, a small country, Bhutan, developed what we call GNH index to operationalize the concept and provide a measure for happiness. Uh, Bhutan is using nine happiness indicator to determine the health of the whole, eco whole ecosystem surrounding a person, and no, no major policies are implemented in Bhutan if it fails what we call the GNH indicator test. The nine important domains which forms the basis for measurements are, number one, the psychological well-being, the second one, uh, health, third, time use, fourth, education, fifth, cultural diversity and resilience, sixth, good governance, seven, community vitality, eighth, ecological diversity and resilience, and nine, finally, the living standards. Uh, sustainability is the essential basis and precondition of such a scene economic system. But a, an economic system exists not for survival, but to provide the enabling condition for human happiness and well-being of all life forms. Our new economy will be an economy based on a genuine vision of life's ultimate meaning and purpose. An economy that doesn't, that, uh, doesn't cut us off from nature and community, but it fosters true human potential, fulfillment, and happiness. Although the concept of uh, GNH has Buddhist origins, I see GNH is relevant globally, as nations need not be Buddhist to value sustainable and equitable social economic development. They need not be Buddhist to conserve environment or preserve and promote culture and foster good governance. Even a uh, well-noted Nobel laureate in economics, Professor Stiglitz, mounted a powerful case that the time has come to move beyond GDP as the dominant measure of human progress by finalizing agreement on the introduction of a more integrated set of ecological, social, and economic goals and measures. Further, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has also felt that its GNH is more important than GDP as a further development philosophy. I quote, if you are to achieve sustainability and happiness, uh, gross national product has long been the yardstick to which economies and politicians have been measured. Yet, it fails to take into account the social and environmental costs of so-called progress. We need a new economic paradigm that recognizes the parity between the three pillars of sustainable development. Social, social economic, and environment well-being are indivisible. Together, they define global happiness." Unquote. Thus, for my nation, today GNH is the bridge between the fundamental values of kindness, equality, and humanity, and the necessary pursuit of economic growth. GNH acts as our na national conscience, guiding us through making wise decisions for a better future. It ensures that no matter what our nation may seek to achieve, the human dimension, the individual's place in the nation is never forgotten. forgotten. It's a constant reminder that we must strive for a caring leadership so that as the world and our national goal change, our foremost priority will always remain the happiness and the well-being of our people, including the generation to come after us. Thus, this is why I say uh, cross-national cross -national development is a development guided by human values, which is similar to sustainable development. 
For this GNH concept, the greatness in the concept lies in the simplicity of its origin, for it's born from none other than one person, my king, his majesty, the king, the fourth king, Jigme Singh Wonchu, for his passionate desire to serve a country and people from a virtuous human endeavor. And I'm confident that the noble goal of gross national happiness will be key to Bhutan's success in maintaining our unity and harmony and indeed our character as a nation. Uh, with this, uh, I thank you once again and have a